Welcome to Hurry Up Pinball, a show where I teach you how to work on your pinball machine. Today I'm going to be walking you through the installation process for my homemade playfield lights. If you haven't already done so, be sure to check out my previous tutorial, How to Build Playfield Lights, on the Hurry Up Pinball channel. So let's get started, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. For this installation, we're going to be installing the Super Night LED kit items, along with the complete lights from my previous tutorial. You're going to need some cable management sticky tabs, two 5-pin LED extension cables, 3M extreme double-sided tape, and some 4-inch zip ties. Attach the magnetic strips to the magnetic strip glued to the back of the light rail. Pay special attention to the polarity of the magnetic strips. This magnetic strip is not properly aligned. If the magnetic strip is not properly aligned, remove the magnetic strip, turn it 180 degrees, and remount it in the proper orientation. This picture shows the correct orientation. Apply the magnetic strip to the magnetic strip on the second set of lights, being sure to use the proper orientation. This step will simplify the installation process later on when mounting the lights to the pinball cabinet. Grab a pair of scissors and cut a quarter inch wide strip of 3M Extreme double sided tape. Place the back of the sensor next to the strip and use an X-Acto knife to cut the strip similar in size to the sensor. Apply the cut piece of tape to the back of the sensor. Leave the red backing on for now. Grab the power brick and cut a strip of tape almost as wide as the power brick. I find that mounting two pieces on the end work better than one big piece in the middle. Attach the piece of tape to the back of the power brick, leaving the red backing in place. Cut a second piece of 3M double-sided tape and attach it as well. Again, leave the red backing on. Grab your bag of 5-pin connectors and install one in each end of the LED lights. Grab your 5-pin Y splitter and install 5-pin connectors in each of the ends of the Y splitter. Here you can see the items that are ready to be installed in the pinball machine. Start off by unplugging the pinball machine. Open the coin door, undo the lockdown bar latches, remove the lockdown bar, and remove the playfield glass. Find a safe place to put the playfield glass that is out of the way. Be sure to close the coin door. Look in the back corners of the cabinet for a place to mount the remote sensor. You want to look for a place that is line of sight to the remote but is out of the way. Make sure there is room to mount the sensor and that the cables will not be pinched. On my Jurassic Park I decided to mount the sensor in the back left corner of the pinball cabinet.
Next, raise the playfield and set it on the playfield support bars. From the bottom of the playfield, manually push the ball eject coil plunger to remove the pinballs from the machine. With the pinballs out of the machine, move the playfield out to the end of the support bars, giving you plenty of room to access the back of the pinball cabinet. Now that you have room to get into the back of the cabinet, find the optimal mounting position for the sensor and box, making sure that no cables will get pinched when the playfield is back in place. Each pin is going to be different, so it may take some time to find the ideal location to mount the sensor and the sensor box. Just make sure it has line of sight to the remote and the wires will not be crushed by the playfield. Remove the backing from the box and sensor and mount both to the cabinet. If there is not enough clearance for the cables on the side, you can also mount the box to the back of the playfield backboard and run the sensor through an opening in the backboard. I try to avoid running the sensor over the top of the backboard as this is a definite pinch point. Take your time and find a good spot. You can see here that I decided to mount the box with the plug for the power brick facing up. I did this just to prevent the power cord from accidentally falling out since I have a shaker motor installed as well. It is possible to remove the sensor box if you wanted to place it in a new location. However, once you've pushed down on the box, it will stick to the wall and will be a little more difficult to remove. Use your X-Acto knife to remove the red backing from the double-sided sticky tape. Then, mount the sensor in the back corner of the cabinet in the location you decided upon. To provide the maximum amount of wire clearance, I mounted the sensor all the way against the side art wall. Next, slide the playfield back in place. As you slide the playfield back, check to make sure the sensor cable is not getting pinched by the playfield. Double check to make sure the sensor cable isn't getting pinched. As you can see in this picture, there's plenty of room for the sensor cable. Raise the playfield again to get at the back of the cabinet. Set the power brick in the bottom of the pinball cabinet and plug the power brick cable into the sensor box. Use the existing cable holder to route the power cord. Install one cable management tab high in the back wall of the cabinet. Now take one of the five pin extension cables and run it through the mounting tab you just installed. Here's what it should look like once installation of the cable is complete. Here is a picture of how I routed the 5-pin extension cable. Move over to the other side of the cabinet and mount a cable management tab in a similar position to the previous one you installed. Route the 5-pin extension cable through the cable management tab. Check to make sure the cable can slide freely. This will help when installing the lights on the playfield. Next, connect the two 5-pin extension cables to the Y connector. 
Make sure that the arrows on the extension cables and the Y connector line up. Here is an example of how the arrows on the connector should line up. Make sure to connect both 5-pin extension cables to the Y connector in the proper orientation with the arrows lined up. Cut two small pieces of electrical tape and complete one wrap around each connection. This will prevent the connectors from accidentally coming apart. Wrap the second piece of electrical tape around the other extension cable. Now, connect the single end of the Y connector to the sensor you installed previously. Make sure the arrows are aligned on the connectors. Cut another piece of electrical tape and complete one wrap around the connector. As you can see here, we've got quite a mess of wires. Now, it's time to clean up the bottom of the pinball cabinet. Grab the two 5-pin extension cables and zip tie them together. Make sure to leave some slack in the cables so they are free to move up top when you install and remove the playfield lights. Take the remainder of both 5-pin extension cables and zip tie them together using a single zip tie. The zip tied bundle should rest on the bottom of the cabinet to keep from pulling on the cables. Use cable cutters to remove the excess zip tie strap. Newer Stern pinballs have a service outlet plug in the back box. If your service outlet is located in the back box, grab the back box keys and lower the bottom portion of the back box panel. Many of the other manufacturers have this outlet in the front right portion of the pinball cabinet. Plug in the power cord for the power brick into the outlet and feed it into the back of the pinball cabinet. Once the power cord is fed into the back of the pinball cabinet, raise the back box panel and lock it back into place. Here you can see a standard plug used in most Stern pinball machines. With this type of plug, you will not need an adapter. If your service outlet looks like this, you will need to order a 515P to C13 adapter in order to plug in your power cable. Plug the power cord from the back box into the power brick. Use your X-Acto knife to remove the red backing on the double-sided sticky tape. Find a good spot in the bottom of the cabinet to mount the power brick. If your service outlet is in the front of the pinball cabinet, Make sure you are able to reach both the outlet and the sensor box when you mount the power brick into the cabinet. Use a cable management tab to route the power cable from the back box to keep it clean and out of the way. Here's what the cabinet looked like when we first started installing all the cables. Here you can see how much difference good cable management makes. 
Go ahead and lower the playfield back into position. As you slide the playfield back and hit the first notch, walk around to the back and use the handle on the backboard in order to lift it over the notch. Then push the playfield in all the way and return it to its original position. Not every pinball machine has a handle on the back of the backboard, but I really wish they would start making this a common feature on every pinball machine. Now it is time to install the lights on the playfield. When you connect the LED lights to the extension cable coming out of the back of the back box, you're going to want to make sure the black cable matches up with the arrow on the 5 pin extension cable. If the black cable from the lights is not connected to the arrow on the extension cable, the lights will not turn on. Once you have connected the lights, slide the 5 pin extension cable back into the pinball machine until the light rail is about three quarters of an inch from the back glass guide. Before removing the adhesive backing, hold the lights into position on the side of the cabinet to look for anything that may be in the way. I had to slightly bend a spaceship holder on Attack from Mars to keep it from making contact with the lights. Each machine is going to be different, so be sure to check prior to removing the adhesive backing. Once you have checked for obstructions, Remove the adhesive backing and start at the back of the cabinet. The lights need to sit a tiny bit below the glass guide. I like to place my thumb on the top of the lights and feel the channel at the same time to make sure that the lights are not mounted too high. You want the lights very close to the lip of the glass guide, but not above it. Use your opposite hand to keep the unmounted portion off of the side of the cabinet. Work your way slowly from one end to the other as you mount the lights. Check everything again before pushing the lights down firmly. If you are installing these lights on an older pinball machine, it's a good idea to wipe down the sides with a little isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel. This will promote adhesion of the magnetic tape. If you are satisfied with the placement of the lights, squeeze down on the light rail. Here you can see the distance from the back glass guide to the light rail. Now move to the other side of the cabinet and connect the lights to the 5 pin extension cable. You're going to want to check for any obstructions on this side as well. Make sure that you connect the black cable to the arrow on the 5 pin extension cable and then slide the cable back into the cabinet until the light rail is about 3 quarters of an inch from the back glass guide. If there are no obstructions, remove the adhesive backing and mount the light rail. Use your thumb on top of the light rail against the channel for the glass to get a sense of how high or low the lights are. Work your way from the back of the cabinet to the front and make sure that the light rail is just below the glass guide. Take your time while installing the light rail, making sure that there is adequate space for the glass. If you make a mistake while mounting the lights, it is possible to remove the magnetic strip from the side of the cabinet and start over. If you are satisfied with the position of the lights, go ahead and squeeze the light rail to make it adhere to the pinball machine. You can see here that the side art is a tiny bit higher than the lights in a very small section. I was not able to raise the lights any higher or it would have interfered with the playfield glass. For this small section, I grabbed a medium point sharpie and gave it a single pass. Now for the moment of truth. Plug in the pinball machine 
grab the LED remote and turn on the pinball lights. Make sure your remote has line of sight to the sensor. Cycle through all the different settings on the lights. Your light install is now complete. If your lights do not turn on using the remote, be sure to check that the arrows on the connectors are all lined up. You also want to make sure that the black cable is lined up with the arrow on the five pin extension cables near the backboard where you mounted the pinball lights. It is also a good idea to check the connection with the power brick and the sensor power cable. It is important to remember that any time you raise the play field, you will need to remove the lights. The best way to do this is to grab the lights with two hands about six inches from each end and simultaneously fold the lights down. This creates less pressure on the cabinet side magnetic strip than removing it from the ends. Whenever you raise or lower the play field, or when you slide the play field out to work on your machine, be careful not to damage the magnetic strips on the side of the cabinet. This is Craig with Hurry Up Pinball and I wanted to say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, show your support for Hurry Up Pinball by clicking the subscribe button. We can also be found on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram under Hurry Up Pinball.